Hello, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and welcome to the February 7th vlog where you can hear my beautiful morning voice and enjoy a fair dose of my coffee cups with my holes. Oh, by the way, uh, go on the internet now, pause this video and search for chart of caffeine, caffeinated holes, as in you know, the hibou in French that drink coffee. This is amazing. So today I wanted to talk about the late uh, Barry Galbraith. It's amazing coffee, by the way. Um, Barry Galbraith, who was uh, first and foremost a great player, but also had an impact because he was teaching so many great players in New York in his in the later part of his life. And on Abersold Publishing, he published several books. I wanted just to mention, so you see, I'm stuck in creating these courses or tutorial for YouTube, and I seldom just give the straight face like, hey, get that book, you know. So today I wanted to do that and play you a little piece, uh, a little part of the third volume because uh, I think all my private students are using the book right now because it's amazing. So long story short, uh, these are called the Perry Galbraith Jazz Guitar Study Series. I think each issue is about 10 bucks. So it's really, really cheap and they're really deep because they're not a method, it's like all written out, no tabs. So this is not for the faint of heart. Um, you have to, to be able to read or to at least decipher and I want to show you. So this is the fingerboard workbook. So this is like positions on steroids and how to shift between positions. Great book. Uh, daily exercises. This is one that had a huge impact on my playing because it's for minor. So melodic minor, harmonic minors. For you guys that know your major modes. Oh, this is Dorian. This is Phrygian. This is for the other modes. And they're all um, studies. So I'll show you one. Here's B flat harmonic minor. And he just plays through arpeggios and stuff, and it's they sound good. That's the that's the really fun part. Is you just read those and they make sense. Um, good. So that's number one, two, and four is play along with Baroque. It's great because it's for two guitars. So always two. You have two guitar parts, and those are the inventions uh, for cello. The two part inventions. Anyways, they're arranged for guitars. There's a CD with it. Um, and this one has a CD, and for dessert, this one has a CD too. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, uh, briefly, before I, I show you a piece. Um, I started to use this one in 2003, I think. I was still a kid. I mean, I'm still a kid uh, to some extent. But the point is, they're all written out comping studies on standard progression. So here's uh, You Stepped Out of a Dream. All written out, no tabs, no chord diagrams, so this already will scare away about half of you guys, at least. Sip of coffee, sip of coffee, sorry. But uh, point being is you don't need to read, you don't need to sight read, you just need to kind of decipher it. You just need to kind of know what it is. The beautiful part is it's gradual. So you start with the first one, shiny, and um, you, if you can put your hand on this and I'll give you a challenge. Take a month and try to learn the first page and you'll be glad you did because there's chord shapes that you will learn that you will maybe sometimes have known but say, hey, I've never thought of using it in the context. Plus, it's all written out in great rhythms. Like all, all the rhythms are like right on, it's swinging. There's a CD with it and it's Barry Galbraith playing uh, with Milt, Milt Hinton. Who is it? Bass player. Milt Hinton. So it's stereo to separate it. So you can tune out, you can do the balance left, right, and tune out the guitar or the bass. All the bass lines are written at the end of the book, but they're written in treble clef if you want to read them with a friend. Uh, so this has been a game changer for me as far as learning comping because you can actually see context. You're not just learning shapes. So it's like, it would be like transcribing comping. I've done a video about this a long time ago. Transcribing comping is extremely difficult. Um, especially if you transcribe piano comping, it's super hard because you can't figure it out. This is a good context to kind of ease the process and make you sound good. And you don't need to, to apply these things right away, but you're like, hey, I never knew a D7 sharp 5 sharp, a sharp 9 could go to a D sharp 11 sharp 9. You know, these things you kind of, you, it's like a little lab, laboratory, a little lab for for finding new shapes and new ways to do like side slipping and new ways to use rhythms and new ways to approach uh, sometimes a progression that seems simple like uh, you know two five one or something like that. All right, so let me play a chorus of rhythm changes. So rhythm number one, it's on page. If you actually get the book, it's on page 
sorry guys, page 24. Um, I'm going to play the first page. I'm going to be super sloppy, I'm super tired. Uh, but at least it gives you an idea of how it sounds. It's B flat rhythm changes and it's really cool to, to hear how these things go. I'm not playing with a bass, I'm playing with my friend the metronome and the amp and this. So thank you for watching the vlog. Please subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher vlog where you can hear me ramble. One, two, one, two, three, four.